So the command injection vulnerability, here it says ping a device. We can ping a device. So, you know, we can put an IP address here or we can just use a domain name like Google and submit it. And let me open CMD to show you the case, what's happening. So if you see right here, uh, what we can assume by the results. See, we can assume this command is being run to get the IP and ping done. Okay. If you see right here, there are four replies. So definitely it's using a command which is going to have uh, four retries. Okay. Four times it will try the ping command and send the request and google.com. This is the case and this is the part which we control. We cannot control this ping command. We cannot do anything with it. But this is what the IP or whatever we type in this place in this input field. And this will be used right here. If I press enter, you will see that in the page which is vulnerable and here I get the exact same result, right? That's my point. You're able to control this google.com. But let me tell you some tricks which you can use to, you know, combine this command with something else. So you can use semicolon. In case of Linux, it will definitely work. I'm not sure about Windows, but you can just try it to use it. And then you can type some other command like dir for listing the things. You can see it will not work like this. Um, let's try by putting a space. And you can see it says bad parameter this. So it works only on Linux, not on Windows. But we can definitely try other ways. So we can use something like and here or double and here, which is logical and. Okay, or we can use and let me show you first the and only then I'll come to other. So you can see it will first execute the ping command, but then will list the files here, right? That's my point. It is executing another command. Now you can just put this in input and see the result. Okay. Submit it and you should see in a moment that it will actually show the result. And you can see the listing of files as well right here. Okay, that's good. Now, apart from this, if this doesn't work, what you can use is you can use an pipe symbol here. Okay, now pipe, what it does is simply, uh, it is like ping google.com or just use dir. Now, it's an either an or concept. But in this case, what you need to do for making this to run is type an invalid IP here, anything. Okay. Now this, since it is not an IP, it will execute this uh, part. Okay. This DIR. So you can see since that was not working, it just sent us the result, which was working the or part for the uh, DIR command. Now you can use any command instead of that DIR and maybe get your shell. So that's not our point right now. We have already learned a bit of it in the previous lectures. So we don't want to mess with them for now. But that was the low level command injection. Let's see what it does in the medium level. I will view the source and see what it does. So you can see this time it is just blacklisting two of them like and and. So that's like the logical and and this part for the Linux, this semicolon. It's going to replace all of them with nothing. But you can still use other symbols. That's my point. So you can, you know, type anything right here, like google.com. And then you just say and. A single and will work, a double doesn't. Now you can just type that command again, submit. And you can see it works once again. And in the high level, what we want to try is something like, like, you know, a pipe symbol, which is not disabled. So for that, just type anything here, which is an invalid IP. Because of that, the ping command will not be able to work properly. And then you just say or with this pipe symbol, run this command. So now DIR will work. You can see it works as expected. Let's go on the high security as well and see what we have in there. 
So in the high security, it's going to blacklist a lot of things. But still, it has not blacklisted the double and or double semicolon or double this sign or this. So we can use something in double. For example, we can use um, the or for the like two times. We can just put that as the logical or. And for this, we just type anything which is a non-existing IP and then the dir command. Let's submit it. And you will see that it works perfectly. So that's how you exploit the command injection vulnerability in its high level. Now, there is just one homework which I have for you. Just try this brute force attack with burp suite now, okay? Because what you have to do, let me just give you the process, but you will do it yourself. Just take this, uh, like the, put some request in these, capture the request in burp suite, then click on action, send them to the intruder tab. And here is what you're gonna do. Set the attack target. Now positions, uh, you have different attack types, so you can use any of them. For example, the sniper, if you are going to use it, it is basically the simplest type of intruder attack and it will use only one set of payload, like one word list, and it will replace only one position at a time. For example, if I have a word list which has four words and I have two positions, then it will just make eight requests in overall. Battering RAM will use a single set of payload again, but it will put the same input on multiple positions. The pitchfork will use different payload set for each position and the cluster bomb, it will try all possible combinations of payloads. So it's good to use in some CTFs or some simulated challenges, but in real life, I will not recommend you to use that since it is going to make a lot of requests and a lot of traffic. So you can try that if you have less words in your word list and you have less positions to test. But generally, when you have to test a lot of positions with the same things, with the same word list, and that word list is also very big, I will not recommend that. So using these payload positions, set them as I have shown you earlier, then use the payload. And here you have multiple payload types like, you know, you have simple list, you have a pure brute force cell uh, where you don't have to you know put any word list. You can see it will not use any word list here. It will literally try every single possible combination of letters. Then you have some more right here, which we don't really want to get for now. But for you, I will just recommend to use the simple list, use it, load your word list, and then try the attack. Okay, so that's your homework, which you have to do. Again, don't forget to research about the DVW installation. Install it, and that's it. You can start to play. So for this lecture, I think that's a lot and that's it. I will see you in the next lecture where we'll continue with some really amazing web server hacking stuff. Thank you.